Hello folks and welcome to the channel or welcome back. And this is part number two of the big cleanup of the David Brown. And we're going to tackle the rear fenders. So I'm going to start by removing all the tag plates. Then we start removing the lights. Uh, some of these weird reflectors that are still on there. The, the light and some other parts. And then we're going to straighten up these fenders where they are bent. And then hopefully I will be able to get it off the tractor and then get it ready for blasting. So let's start by removing the tags. The tractor that I have is having two tags. There's one tag that talks about the importer in the country who imported it and the approval number and the chassis number or the serial number of the tractor. And the second tag uh, refers to the chassis number and the engine number. And it's good to check the tags and actually see if it matches up with the actual engine itself and the chassis. So then you know if it's an original tractor or if it's one that has been recomposed with parts from different tractors. So for the purest amongst us, this might be of interest. I don't know what this tractor is, so we're going to find out. So let us have a closer look on those tags. So here we got the first tag, this is the importer tag and the second tag is over there. So let's focus on the first one. So the tractor was imported by Van der Nabele in Machelen, this is in Belgium. It's a David Brown and it's a 990 AS, which probably means the uh, Selectomatic. And then we have the chassis number which is a 990A815122. And I have this exactly on the paperwork. And this number right here is the approval number in the country where the tractor was imported. So we might want to check the chassis number if this is matching up. And therefore, first of all, we're going to look at the second tag that is on this tractor on the other side. So this is the second tag and the first number is something about the reduction, 9 to slash 50. Not quite sure what that means uh, because it's a French tag and I'm not sure what they mean with that. But the chassis number is a 990-A815-122S, which is exactly the same number that we found on the other tag, which is already pretty good. So now we should find the back on the chassis. And the second number is all about the engine number, 4490011455. So we're going to check on that. So we're looking on the chassis now and I see 990-A815-122S and that's exactly the number that we have on the tag. So now the tags on the fender and the numbers on the engine and the chassis are matching up. So this is a original tractor. I guess lucky me, but for me it didn't really matter much. But I think if you're a purist, you want to have these numbers matching up. So now we're going to remove those tags before we lose them. So I'm going to drill them off and put them in a box and save them for later to put them back. The tags are riveted on, so that shouldn't be all that hard to get us out. That's one. And now that should basically come off. The next things to do on this fender is not really very complicated. We're just going to remove all this old cabling. We'll have to make all that new anyway. Remove the reflectors and then finally remove the lights and some silly attachments that are on there. Um, not really highly technical, but we got to do it. Now this reflector goes off easy because I think they put it on to pass the MOT because this tractor went to MOT before. These will be a little bit more difficult. I think I might have to grind those off. Uh, I'll see. I don't know yet. Uh, this may be very hard to get them off because everything has been painted on it and it may not come off. So uh, let's see how we're going to do this. Uh, might try to remove the lens. Maybe I can recuperate some of this and maybe not. Um, Anyway, I had to open it up anyhow. So here we have the cabling. I might actually recycle this cabling because the cable loom that I have uh, doesn't support this. I may not be able to recover these lights, but I have brand new lights for the back. 
but I still need some lights in the front of these fenders if I ever want to get it back on the road and pass MOT. So that's why I need to open this up anyhow. So let's see. And also here we can take off all that cabling and then pull that cabling back out. All right, so now it's time to take the housing off. So let's see if I can get this screw to move. Now I can grind them off uh, or I can try to drill them out. I'm going to try first of all to drill these um, things out. this is huh? need the holes in it so all this will have to be repaired you don't see this before you start on it but once you really start to work on it you realize that there are more holes than you expected so this whole area will have to be cut out and the new panel will be have to be welded on it so this is the blinker Let's see where this goes and that's running inside one of those um, channels inside the fender so that's going to be a bit tricky to get it out uh, and try to get this guy off on this side uh, this guy I don't worry too much about it because that guy is broken anyway so whoops that the screwdriver So this is giving us now a little bit of a better sight uh, on the situation. So we need the running lights, the stop lights, and we need the actually blinker. Uh, the rest will take all off. Uh, we don't need this. We'll build new ground uh, connectors. That's not an issue because we have to fix this whole area anyway. You can see how bad it is here. So this all needs to be straightened up and probably I might even have to do a complete patch uh, on this just to weld in a complete panel. Um, but we'll see. Uh, I need to clean it up first of all and then we'll see where we go. Okay, so we're going to take the warning light off. And by the way, we have to have this where I live on your tractor. If you want to pass MOT, you have to have a running light or whatever you call it. And I need to undo the bolt in the back and then we will be able to remove it. There we go. So the next thing is to remove some old attachments or leftovers from attachments. I'm going to grind these off and then we're going to try to fix this whole fender area. Let's see. And that should work. Uh, but that's not a big deal. We can actually cut this out and weld another panel on there. But before I do so, I need to straighten up this fender a bit. And here we have a real deep uh, dent and it's pretty thick material. So the way I do this, and, and I guess we all have our own methods of doing it. I'm using some real thick metal bars that I'm, one, one of them goes in the back. And the other one will go on the top here, like so. And then I'm going to put my wrench on it and then I will bend it over. So let me try to do this. All right. So I got everything gripped and now I'm going to pull this up as much as I can. Right. And you can see it starts to straighten up. Not in full, but we're getting there.
do a bit more here because I think this is still open. As you can see, we start getting a bit of a straight line. It's not perfect yet, but we're getting there. I'm going to release this and it will jump back a little bit. And then the last one. Now it's about time to start um, cleaning up this edge here and for that I will use a dolly but also some pliers to do it. So let's see if we can bend this out a bit. Now the wider the pliers are the better actually but um, I'm doing it little bit by little bit, so we will be able to then use the dolly and then smoothen it out. sure if I'm going to get everything out of it but we're going to try so now let me finish off this rim here and I'm using a dolly for that so um, whatever sticks out I'm trying to position it on the deeper side of the dolly and then I'm just hammering it flat. This is about it guys, I can't get it any better. So um, now we're going to clean this up and then see what we need to do with this area. So I've got the fender more or less back into shape. Uh, it's not perfect but we still put some putty up later. But first of all we need to clean up this whole area and I already started grinding it down a bit so I can start welding. This whole area is really in a bad shape right. So what we're going to do is to get a plate, a metal plate, and this is 1.5 mil and I'm going to install that plate right in here. In other words, I'm going to weld it in place but of course not on top of the existing fender although you could do that and then hammer that in all around and then fill that up with a putty. No, I will actually cut along the edges then take out the old panel and then put the new panel in and then start welding it in. So that's the approach we're going to take. And that will be perfect because then we can actually fit the new lights that will go on there like this. So with any further ado, I'm going to mark this up and then we start cutting it out. So let's see where we need to put it. Uh, it's always a little bit of checking but you want to have it in the right spot. And that's what I'm using these magnets to hold it while I'm going to trace the contours of my metal panel and for that I'm going to use a very fine pencil because that's exactly the line where I want to cut it at the inside not at the outside because if I cut it at the outside then the opening will be too big. It's exactly the same approach as we have done for the bonnet. All right, so let's see how that looks like if the trace is there. Yeah, we've got a nice trace, so now we can actually cut it out. So we have it all grinded out all around, so let's see if we can take it off. Here we go. And here it is, uh, the inside. So let's see, here is the panel that we want to put in and that should just fit nicely. And I think it actually does. It might need a bit of trimming on the bottom. So 
so let's see if we can fit the panel now. I had to trim it a little bit here and there, but I think this time the panel will just fit in nicely. Yeah, that will do. So now let's see where the lights will go. Now I have these bolts here in the back and I have to make sure that they are not fitting right in the support beam because then I cannot put the nut up. So this is about right. So if I place them here, then I should be good. Although I don't like it that they're sticking out, but the tire is still here, so it should be good. All right, so let me just mark that. And then the wire that comes out um, is about there. So I think the wire is about right there. So that should be no problem. I've been looking around for good pens for so long and I, I just don't find any. So let us cut this over here so we can feed out, feed through these cables and um, just need to make a hole and then we should be good to go. So it's about time now to weld in the panel. So I'm gonna make sure I have a good ground. This is the panel we drill the hole in. I need to check now which is the upper side because otherwise it's not gonna fit. Just gonna feed the cables through it so I don't lose them in the cavity. Um, of course, I will still put the grommet up later on, but not right now. Um, we still have to paint things and then all that. So I just want to get these cables a bit in place and we're going to fit the panel where it's supposed to be, right? Uh, so let's see if we can do this. For that, I'm gonna use some of these magnets. They are very handy for that. Um, so I'm gonna start tagging this in place. Here, so that's level. I want to make sure that it really fits flush because I don't want it sticking out anywhere. So we're going to start with a few welding tags over here and then there and then I'm going to work my way around it to tag it in place making sure that this panel is really uh, properly fitted. There should be one, two, Three, four. So we got it tagged in place. Um, of course, that's not final. Now I need to fill it up all around. I'm not gonna go for a continuous weld because that would deform the material too much. So I'm gonna start stitching that in little bit by little bit. Now little holes like this, I keep filling up on the side with very short pulses. And I just go around the contours until it's filled up. And then it's just a matter of grinding it down. Well, and here's the fender all welded up. You can see where we had the holes of the bolts that's now filled up with metal. I just grinded it down. Of course, we still have to put some putty up now or polyester to make it completely smooth. But I think this is a lot better than when how we started. So I'm going to take the fender off so I can blast it. And to take the fender off, you need to remove about five bolts. Now these are the square fenders. Uh, they are differently mounted than the half fenders as you see. Uh, but the bolts are actually over there. There's two bolts there and there's about three bolts underneath you need to undo. And they can be very tough to get out. I got one out already and, and here is that bolt and you can see how it's been corroded and rusted away on the top. Even the tread is gone and that made it hard to get it out. 
The best tool to remove these bolts is an impact wrench um, or a drill with a socket on that actually can force an impact onto the bolt so it comes loose easily. Otherwise it's going to be very tough to do it. So here we go. So I'm going back and forth. And this is very tough, this bolt. I removed all the bolts on the fender except this one. And this guy is a real pain in the butt. Um, the fender is kind of loose already, as you can see, uh, because I was able to prime out the washer underneath. Um, so I'm going to spray some WD-40 onto it. Now I can lift the fender up a bit and let it soak for a while. So that hopefully the rust will dissolve to some extent and uh, I might then be able to get it out. Often on YouTube you see videos where everything goes very smoothly, but reality is often that it takes a lot of effort to get something out. So let me try and see if there's any movement in it. So despite all the WD-40 and all the effort we've done, the head of the bowl came off. So now I can take the fender off and I will actually have to drill out this bolt and, you know, tap new thread in it or weld something on top of this. That's also a possibility, but I think I'm going to grind it off and then tap it out and put a new bolt in. That happens sometimes. So let's take the fender off so that we can start to blast it. And this is a heavy guy. Um, very solidly built, as you can see. There we go. There's a lot of junk on here. Let's see if we take that off and then see what we can do and how we can get to the rest. This is a loose block normally that's just bolted onto it. So in essence, um, I should be able to move that, but even that doesn't move. So let's see. Ah. You can actually see that this bolt here that broke off is turning with it. So it is really stuck and rusted inside this metal piece. It's not really stuck inside the part underneath. It's really inside this part here. Um, that doesn't seem to work so far, so I grind it off the top and now I'm going to drill a hole right in the middle. And I already started drilling, uh, but that way I will be able to get it out. So. Yeah, we're almost there. So I think with this, I will be able to get it out. So I'm going to try now a bigger bit, uh, and that should be enough to weaken that bolt at the inside to wiggle it off. But let's see if that works, because I'm not sure. You see already the rust popping out, huh? Finally, it broke off, and that's good. So now I can remove the leftover of this bolt, which is sitting in there. Now that should be easy. And here is the rest of the bolt, and it finally came out. And you can see that actually the tread is good, but everything above the bolt was really rusted. 
So the fender is completely blasted and while we were blasting we noticed a few more problem areas with rust and this is one of those areas where we have to fix this and for that I'm going to bend some metal like this and we will use the shrinker and the stretcher to get the right curve and now we're going to weld this into place. We have to do about three locations like this. It's not a lot of work but it's a little bit of fiddling. But before we do that first of all we're going to spray the inside of the fender with a protective layer. Here we have the inside of the fender and it's been cleaned with the sandblaster but now I'm going to spray it with some protective, protective coat. So let's have a look on how we're going to fix this now. So I'm going to create a metal piece, bend it in a corner and then curved so I can weld it on here like so. And for that I'm going to cut out a piece of metal which is about one and a half centimeters by let's say two and a half. So this is about four centimeters uh, of total cut and this is what we're going to do first of all. So here's our piece of metal which we're going to weld right into that spot. So now we're going to bend it in an angle and then we're going to curve it. So here is our little metal plate bent in a corner and of course you can see that it goes up and down because I don't have a curve. So what we need to do now is to uh, actually stretch this uh, metal and I'm going to stretch it on this side here. So I'm going to open up here the metal so spreading it and for that one I'm going to use a stretcher. And a stretcher is nothing special, it's basically a beak which will actually pull open the material once you depress the pedal. So I'm going to hold it in the middle and I'm going to depress the pedal and you will see it will start to bend. I'm not going to push it too hard because I will have to check every so often how the curve is and you can already see how that starts to curve. I might have done it already just a little bit too much maybe. All right. I think this is about right. A little bit more here. There's also a beak that exists which is actually a shrinker and that just works the opposite. All right, let's see if that fits. So here's our piece that we stretched and you can see now I'm having the curve so now I can actually start welding it in. And we're going to do it exactly the same way as with the other piece. So everything is welded up and patched up so now it's a matter of grinding it down here and there and then put some putty up and then we are about ready to put the base coat onto the uh, fender. So, let's see how the sticker looks like. I'm not sure if it's going to be too long or too short. Um, I think that looks about right. Um, I wonder if there's a left and a right hand side one. And yes, there is one because the angle here has to be right. And let's see, so this should be about it as it's supposed to be. We have no air bubbles in it because that doesn't look good. As you could see, my paint sticks pretty well because I was able to pull the sticker back on and off. So that's it. So I think this looks pretty good. And believe it or not guys, but I've got the lights. They arrived actually last night 
and they look pretty good and I have to be honest uh, for the price that they cost like 16 euros I cannot build lights at all and these are the lights look at that no this will be really be nice but won't it it fits perfectly of course it's the wrong one this is the left one I should have put the right hand side up there are two lights one for the left one for the right um, and this is for side mount you can see it on the lines on the glass but they look so cool um, they look like the originals so it isn't worthwhile rebuilding the originals for 16 euros for a set but that's for later um, now we need to continue on the fender and um, get the fender painted so folks, I'm going to call it a day. I'm going to have dinner and a nice shower and then we continue tomorrow. Oh, I told you I would have a great dinner. And it's probably going to be really the Belgian way. But here we go. Some really nice Belgian French fries. With a Really worth special. So, bon appetit. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did, and I'll see you tomorrow because there's still a lot more to come on the David Brown. Thank you for viewing, and by all means, provide any comments. Thank you, and bye bye.